Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. So there's been some uh, concerning things going on behind the scenes, which you wouldn't really notice if you had taken a look at the traditional markets and what's going on with the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. But if you take a look behind the scenes, there's some concerning things going on. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen and is definitely going to be the almighty sell off that uh, we're going to talk about. But it's something that I need to bring everybody's attention so they can make an informed decision. So this was a post uh, this morning. And this is from the uh, Kobe Ice letter. Kobe side letter, excuse me. Official X account, Kobe side letter, an industry leading commentary on the global capital markets. And they state US stocks have seen the largest outflow by institutional investors since September of 2015. That's a, quite a bit. That's quite a statement. First of all, we throw that word around a lot, don't we? Institutional investors, institutional investors here and institutional investors there. What the heck are those? These are institutional investors. It's not just some group of random people. It's organizations, it's banks, it's endowments, it's everything. And uh, this was a, a good piece put together by Strike. Institutional investors are insurance companies, funds, hedge funds, mutual, commercial banks, pension funds, endowment funds. So the difference is like for endowment funds, those are essentially individuals or big, huge conglomerates that they're pooling money together for their charitable missions, whatever those actually are to help those grow. Pension funds, those are essentially retirement accounts, right? You got retirement accounts for different organizations, retirement accounts for states, retirement accounts for all different places. And they're just investing into different portfolios to make sure that these pension funds actually have a good return. Commercial banks, they pool the funds from sources like you and me, and they take uh, all that uh, money, fra fractional reserve lending, and they can actually invest, like it says, widely. Insurance companies actually take your premiums, and they actually invest that as well. Mutual funds, they broad range of stocks, and then hedge funds are the most risky, and they can use a whole plethora of different um, tactics to gain funds. So when we're talking about institutional investors, it's somewhere in this realm of people investing. And if you take a look at those, those are a lot of individuals and a lot of, like I said, businesses and institutions that actually know what potentially is going on. So when I saw this, I'm like, I shouldn't take this lightly. I should peel the layers back and see not just who is actually selling, but some of the gurus behind the scenes who are selling. So let's get into this piece. So not selling, or net selling, I should say, reached six billion last week, second largest in at least 15 years. This is also 50% larger than the 2024 record inflow of four billion seen a few weeks ago, which I gotta tell you, that's a pretty smart thing. If you're looking for massive returns, they put in a bunch of money, everything goes up, they're seeing all time highs, they take money out. Professional investors appear to be pulling out the market, S&P is up, but this is the crazy thing. The S&P 500 is up 20% year to date and 40% over the last 12 months or four times the average annual return. Let me say that one more time. S&P 500 up 20% year to date, 40% over 12 months. That's four times the annual return. So I guess it's not too crazy to think about this because the smart ones, the smart ones manipulate you behind the scenes and the smart ones just talk about how great things are and it's only going to go up and up forever and even in crypto, you're gonna have this thing called diamond hands, if you haven't heard it already. And it's ridiculous because the smart ones look at this and go, you know what, I should probably take some profits. And those are the smart ones. The manipulators are the ones that just tell you never sell so they can dump on you. And that's pretty much what it is. So it asks the question, it's very smart. Are stocks overdue for a correction? And you can see here, this is the net sales by institutional clients since 2010. And it's the second uh, largest amount. So what the heck is going on? Well. As I posted this on my ex account, people just said, ah, don't worry about it, Rob. It's just people that are selling off because they are insecure or they are they have their doubts or their fears or their trepidations about what's going to happen for the presidential election. And if you don't know, we've got an election coming up on Tuesday, essentially two days, 11 hours and 10 minutes away. And we're going to find out probably not that day, probably 24 hours after that, maybe 48 hours, depending on... Uh, how they start to count these votes and mail-in ballots and all that stuff. But people are saying, well, they're just trying to hedge their bet. They don't know who's going to come in, so they're selling off. And it's just a normal type of thing. I will tell you this, this amount of selling didn't happen 40 years ago. 
It didn't happen eight years ago. It didn't happen 12 years ago. Like they said before, it was like 15 years ago. And then you have to think to yourself, well, the S&P 500 is doing great. So why would people sell? Again, the people, the smart ones look at this and go, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good about this market. And I'm just going to start selling because we're at, we were at roughly all time highs. And then of course we sold off, boom, and here we are. And what does that mean for our market? Well, I love using Ben site. It's great. If you guys are looking to like clarify or to make sure that this information or collaborate this information, make sure it's correct, go to Ben site. Some of it's free. Uh, you can get 10% off the first month, but like I like just using stuff like this just to, to make things simple to understand. Here's a heat map. And over a day, and of course, yeah, we know that there's dips in our markets, right? But take a look over a day. Look at this. Everything's in the red except for Tia. Wow. Flow. Radium is a good one. That's uh, made massive gains. But over the last uh, seven days, it's pretty good, right? When in doubt, zoom out. And what do you notice? You notice Bitcoin's doing pretty good. ETH actually is up a percentage point. XRP, watch out, 0.39%. How about two weeks? Now we get into some red, right? Bitcoin's doing okay. Solana was up 5% in 14 days is pretty good. 30 days? Okay, a little more green. But let's really zoom out. Let's go 200 days. Now we're seeing like which ones are the fastest horses, right? It's not everybody. Bitcoin is only 12%, Solana 28%, Dogecoin, everybody laughs at meme coins. But as I remind you, don't sleep on Doge. Doge has been around over a decade and it's been the top 31 for that entire time. So when people say meme coins are ridiculous, well, I'm pretty sure Doge is probably crushing a lot of our alts that we think are gonna have so much utility. It is what it is, can't stop it. And then of course, over one year, now it's looking pretty good, right? Bitcoin's up 100%, Solana 300%, Doge 134. So what's the difference here between this heat map as people have been dollar cost, you have been dollar cost averaging in a very difficult time, I might add, and the people over here? Well, they're all the same thing and gurus are dumping. That's just how it is. Like to be transparent, I took profits, I don't know, two weeks ago, three, I can't remember, three weeks ago, but I made a video about it and said, hey, I took some profits because I had to buy this uh, this property. As long as everybody's up on the up on the level, right? So what are these gurus I'm talking about? One thing that always concerns me is the people that have knowledge that we don't have. They can kind of see the data that we are not privy to. And one of those people is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, this was on November 1st. Jeff Bezos unloads $3 billion worth of Amazon stock in the latest sale. I was like, hmm, well, does he do that a lot? Or does he do that like every day? I don't think he does. But if anybody knows about supply chains, about what Americans are buying, consumers, it would be this guy. I'm sure he has way more data than anybody else knows. There's this great website called gurufocus.com. I don't think I put that in the description, but it's G-U-R-U-F-O-C-U-S.com. And what they do is they took a look, they take a look retrospectively at all the SEC filings, and they can tell you how much each publicly traded company CEO or founder is actually selling at any given time based on looking back. Now we can see these articles, okay, three billion, that's great, but when was Jeff selling a lot of, of his stock? Well, here you go. Here's the traction summary of Jeffrey, I didn't know his name was Jeffrey, Jeffrey P. Bezos. And in, and in red is the sell volume, and in blue is his final shares. I guess that's the final share price. But you're gonna see that, I remember listening to the All In podcast, and they were talking about how Jeff, in 2021, yeah, they were talking about how it was interesting that he sold off, but people were calling for super cycles, commodity super cycles to be specific. I don't think they were talking about equity super cycles. We were talking about crypto super cycles. And it was uh, Shamath Ali Patai. He said, it's weird that you know he's selling off, but those guys have a lot of information that we don't have. And look how much it was. It wasn't that much as compared to how much recently has been done. And over here as well. And if we take a look, if we come down here, I don't have access to everything. Insider trading history, I like this. Insider trading history of Jeffrey P. Bezos. It'll tell you the price of the stock 
And I mean, that's pretty smart. He hits all time, or I don't know if this is all time highs or not, but he hits $200 and he starts selling like crazy, which I mean, that makes sense, right? You got to take profits. And he sold off, uh, what is the date here? July? Actually, let's go down to 2024 all the way. Because you can see one, one thing I want you to notice is the dates that he sold. In 2023, he sold one share. I think that must, must have been a glitch. I don't know what that is. But 2021, he stopped after November 4th. Pretty good time. Actually, probably the best time to sell. Because after that, I mean, there wasn't, only, there wasn't too much upside after that. 2022 was an awful year for crypto and for traditional equities. And then nothing. 2022, 2023, because you don't sell into weakness. You sell into strength. And now... Here we go again, 2024, 2024, 24, 24, 24. These are sell. I can't tell if these are buys or whatnot, but I mean, it tells you over here the shares that he has. And you can see they're going down. So you can take a look at that and make a decision for yourself. I'm not basing everything on Jeff Bezos, but again, like I said before, some people have data that we don't have data privy to. And it just kind of makes me concerned. So what should you do? Should you start to sell off everything? I can't tell you what to do. I'm just bringing it to your attention because maybe there's something afoot. Maybe somebody knows something. But it makes me a little bit uh, nervous. But again, crypto or digital assets are inevitable. And there was this, this piece that gives me a little hope. Actually, a lot of pretty good amount of hope. This is Paul Tudor Jones. And uh, he was on Squawk Box. I can't play it. I don't want to get uh, any kind of uh, copyright strikes. But essentially, he says like this, all roads lead to inflation. And he said there were a couple of things that he would invest into moving into this point. Because you know, America, we rank up a lot of debt. We just we have a massive amount. And uh, he said, look, he goes, for investments, I like gold. I like Bitcoin. I like that. Both of those things. Pretty good. And then he said something interesting. He said, commodities are so unknown people should be more into commodities. And I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, that makes pretty sense, a lot of sense. I mean, if you're into oil, that'd be a good one. So he's got Bitcoin, gold, commodities. And then he said, and eh, maybe some NASDAQ. So essentially he's like balancing his portfolio with four. And I don't know what, what the weight is, if he's, if he's you know, 5% Bitcoin or 95% Bitcoin, or you know, probably like 15% Bitcoin, 20% gold, 25% uh, commodities and whatever else. I don't know, but it was just interesting to hear him talk because again, if it's somebody that has information behind the scenes, it would probably be Paul Tudor Jones. So it makes me wonder. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That was it, just wanna bring it to everybody's attention. And then lastly, before we get into the q and just wanna give a shout out to uh, Alex Fazel over at Swissboard. They did a great job uh, of calling some really good some really good uh, unknown cryptos. Aether, Carve, I don't know what the heck Carve is though, and Xborg. And actually Alex is a, a friend of mine and he's the one that uh, says, hey, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be good. And I'll listen to him. And uh, if you've ever seen that, there is a document that's been circulating as far as like the, the recent Binance launches of digital assets and they are atrocious. They are atrocious, they are horrible because there are so many insiders, there are so many VCs, there are so many people that actually have way more tokens that you do, they lure you in, they dump on you. But these guys did pretty good. Aether, Export, Carve. Now they're gonna see their volatility, but uh, you know, good for them. And we talked about this. I have a second channel, I don't know if you guys know this, called Dan Degen, which is where essentially you are gonna take massive risk. And uh, everything will probably go to zero, I don't know. But uh, we talked about Aether, Seven, Jesus, it was seven months ago? Wow. And then we talked about Xborg eight months ago. So again, everything we just talked about, you have to understand that, yeah, it's, there's something afoot, but in the long run, the investors that stick around are the ones that are rewarded. And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, we may talk about it. is uh, very, very time sensitive, especially moving into 2025. But that's it for today. If you gotta take off, Get out of here. Go enjoy the weekend.